All right, let's see. Uh, what is that? Are you kidding me? Somebody put nails in there? Really? I'm gonna see what's behind there. What's going on under there? Uh-oh. Honey? Um, the cellulose of our subfloor um, is being consumed by black mold fungus. Uh, yeah. So, bathroom's closed till further notice. The first step to the remodel is going to be the preparation uh, and the demo. So the floor needs to be ripped up, uh, the toilet needs to be removed, uh, the sink needs to be removed, uh, cabinet needs to be removed. That is uh, something that we purchased after removing um, the one here. Uh, you can kind of see the outline of where that old medicine cabinet used to be. It was kind of crazy. It used to uh, open up into the mirror. And so that's not fully finished yet. Uh, that's just temporary. It's going to be cleaned up uh, when everything else gets finished. And so you can kind of see how uh, it's just roughed in right now. Uh, this double switch here, that used to just be one switch that controlled uh, these lights and the fan up there. But I put in a whole nother wire up there for the fan. Uh, I'm going to probably come off of that uh, on the switch for this fan uh, to an additional light here uh, once the shower is built. One thing you're going to want to do before you start demo is have some sort of a plan in place. This is a sketch I did very quickly, as you can tell, of what this is hopefully going to look like afterwards where we have a shower uh, customized to the space instead of having uh, the wall built out uh, to fit the insert that they had and so we'll remove that and we'll have a nice custom walk-in shower with a with a seat and everything and then we'll also have a place to put our toilet uh, roll right in the little wall that comes out a little bit uh, like right here ish and so that's the general plan and uh, we'll see how closely it resembles this when we're done, but uh, we'll get things going and we'll see where we go with it. These are some of the tools that you may want for the preparation and demo stage of the remodel. We have a tape measure for measuring things out, calculating uh, inches squared or feet squared of area for material that you need. We have some hand tools here, especially a crescent wrench and a needle nose pliers. Then over here we have some drill bits and we have the drill to go along with it. We have a screwdriver, a manual one if we need it. Uh, we also have a utility blade and uh, potentially an actual knife as well. Um, we have a jab saw and then we also have a, a powered saw. It's similar to a sawzall, they call it a hacksaw and it's an awesome demo tool. It'd be nice if you had a bucket uh, with a sponge, especially when you're removing the toilet. Uh, in terms of some safety equipment, you're going to want some gloves uh, and then either a dust mask or a respirator and then uh, maybe some safety glasses as well because you only get one set of eyes. And then over here, uh, we're definitely going to want a hammer, uh, maybe even a bigger uh, like a hand sledgehammer and then a, a bigger sledgehammer, a uh, big pry bar, a uh, little pry bar, uh, maybe a chisel, things like that. You may also want a flashlight. This is the little Streamlight Stylus Pro that I carry every day, and this is the bigger LED mag light. For cleanup, it's nice to have a little portable vacuum or shop vac, and honestly, just a good old broom and dustpan is good sometimes too. You may also want some ear protection and knee protection. Last but not least, a garbage bag would be great for trash and also bagging the toilet.
First thing to go is going to be the sink, and so let's clean this area up. So what we're going to want to do now is take a utility knife and cut the caulking around this sink here. And so we'll just cut that so that it doesn't really tear the paint uh, when we go to remove this. And so just cut it here and we'll cut it all the way down in the front here without damaging the vanity. All right, and then over here, we'll cut as well. And it's just gonna go right back afterward, so we just wanna remove this seal. This is the plumbing for the sink, and so you have your hot and cold water lines coming up, and then you have your drain coming down into a trap so that the sewer gas doesn't come through it's a nice seal here and the sewer gas cannot get up into uh, your sink area and be released into the room so what we're going to do is turn off our water and so up here we can turn on uh, this side and we can also turn on the other side full blast and you can see that now we will turn this here and so see if we can get it there we go just a quarter turn now that should have reduced the amount of flow we'll see what happens when I do the other side as well so just corner quarter turn for each and that should shut off completely all of the water and I heard it stop so even though both of these valves are open there's no water coming out because we shut it off here at the wall and so that's very very important we need to shut that water off then uh, we can remove uh, this here. Um, and when we remove this, remember the sewer gas can come into the room, so we wanna plug that. So remember there is water down here, and so we want to uh, unscrew it, let's say from here. Uh, you'll notice how there's a seal uh, right there. Now you can wear gloves for this if you're freaked out, but uh, we'll just pretty much take this off carefully and you'll see how there's hair and stuff, um, which is uh, kind of gross, but you can kind of see how uh, it's doing its job there with the resting uh, water right there. Last thing you're going to want to do before you start pulling is just make sure that there's no uh, screws or anything fastening this to the wall. Uh, in this case, I think, now we do have some uh, right here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, there's a screw uh, right here and there's a screw right here. So we wanna make sure that this is not fastened to the wall and then we will be good to start pulling carefully. Uh, and then if you'll be able to tell if you missed any cutting of caulk, uh, and then you can do some last minute uh, cutting with the razor blade if you need to. And then this whole unit will then be removed. That moment when you realize that there's one more screw up there in the corner that they hid on you, just to be nice. Uh, also, you might want to stick some uh, paper towels or something up into here, prevent it from leaking. Uh, all right, well now it can just separate from the wall here. And the last step is you might need to grab an adjustable crescent wrench and just loosen up on this a little bit, just so that enough so that you can get it by hand on both sides for the hot and the cold water. Now, there may be still some water in these lines. If it goes down on the floor, I don't really care. So I'm just gonna unscrew these the rest of the way. We'll start with this one. And so I'll just unscrew that and we'll just take this off. You see the water coming out a little bit not too big of a deal you can put a bucket down there if you want and I'm just gonna wipe it up so you'll see how that valve is closed now if I were to open this it would spray water at me so make sure this is closed and then uh, we'll do the same thing for the other side all right so no more sink but just notice how right now we still have this trap in here and 
that water is blocking the sewer gas. So uh, we'll see if we can get the work done without removing this, but honestly, I'll probably end up removing it. Just make sure that when you remove it, you stuff a you know old t-shirt or something in there to prevent the sewer gas from getting into the room. Otherwise, it'll get stinky really quick. And so the next step is let's remove the mirror and the cabinet here. This stuff is easily stored um, outside of the bathroom in a convenient location, and especially if you're going to reuse it, which we are. And then notice how you have no more mirror. I'll probably leave this on here, we'll see. I can always unscrew that if I need to. And so, the toilet. Let's get to that next. So this is the water supply for the toilet. Let's see if we can close this valve. We'll just make sure it's nice and tight. Doesn't seem like there should be any water coming through. We're gonna check it. And so we'll flush the toilet. You'll see some like soot at the bottom. We'll clean that out. And so when it comes time to refill, there shouldn't be anything happening. Um, so your toilet pretty much ran out of water. However, there's still water inside the toilet that you have to clear out, and that's always fun. Um, but for now, I think that we're ready to uh, detach the water supply down here. So that is unscrewed now, and you'll see how there's water just waiting there to come out. Uh, this is nice and tight, though. If we unscrew it, then there'll be water that squirts out of there. It's kind of gross. You can kind of see a little bit muddy there. So it's kind of sprays out at you. So don't want to do that. We'll just keep that nice and tight. All right, so the next thing is removing these caps. You might want a knife or something. And so we will um, work our way underneath and then just pop, pop it off. Some of them are tighter than others. Uh, you want to be careful prying with a knife, but uh, use something to get that off of there. That works. Now, we are going to remove the nut from that bolt. Now, that bolt is securing the toilet to the floor on either side. There's one identical to this on the other side, and it is attached down there to the toilet flange, which is uh, secured to the, the subfloor. One thing you're gonna maybe wanna do with a rusted bolt and nut like this is use some penetrating fluid. With a crescent wrench like this, you're also gonna wanna make sure that you use it properly. We're gonna wanna flip it over like this. We're going to uh, loosen it up and then we'll get it on there nice. We'll push it all the way in, we'll tighten it. We'll make sure that it's as tight as we can get it and it's all the way in. And then we always wanna push the wrench Toward, to loosen it, we want to tr push it towards the adjustable part, and that's going to force the adjustable part down into the body of the wrench. It's the proper way to use a crescent wrench, even though a lot of people will use it. Even I have used it um, the other way, like this, and um, you even could use it maybe like this. I've seen people do that too. The next thing you're going to want is a, a bucket with a sponge because we need to get the water out of the toilet and there's a little bit left in the tank. We need to get that out because there's still water, you know, in that toilet there. And we might even want to bag the bottom of the toilet and then get the toilet out of here. And that'll expose the drain of the toilet. And so all we're going to do is take this sponge. We're going to get it wet uh, in there and then squeeze it out until all the water is out of the toilet. After we lift the toilet off of there very quickly we want to get an old shirt or something to uh, block the sewer gas from coming up into the room all right and then we'll peel the rest of the wax ring off the bottom of this all right so the toilet is bagged and out of the bathroom and you can see how the rest of the wax pretty much was peeled off of the bottom and you'll see right here those bolts coming up and right here and uh, they just pop right in there into this flange. Alright so the next step is removing 
the baseboards here just using a utility knife just like before um, just cut the top of it and uh, peel it right off and then also you know ripping up the the floor you can see how we already ripped it up a little bit right here and then also removing uh, this here and good to go when you get to this part uh, we can just unscrew that that pops off and then you'll notice how there's a, a screw in there that can be uh, undone <laughs> that's not something that you want uh, stopping you from pulling the trim off now if you're going to keep the trim make sure that you're extra careful taking it off um, I'm probably just going to replace my trim you also want to pry up the threshold here I'm actually going to be replacing uh, this threshold here with a carpet to tile threshold so I don't really care if I you know bend it and stuff like that but we de definitely want to remove that so the threshold is gone all of the other flooring is gone um, the baseboards are gone and so really the main task we have left is to pretty much rip out this whole section of wall and also the shower as well so I want to take and actually keep this door I'm gonna try my best to restore it and possibly use it for the finished design so I don't want to break this on the way out we can also take these off of their track and remove these glass panels so I removed this glass panel and down here I just unscrewed this here I'm going to take this out and let's get this off of here now after you remove these screws these sections just pop out now all you have to do since it's detached you just got to pull it and rip it right off and we're good to go the next thing is we're going to remove these and take this off and we can kind of expose the plumbing back there a little bit and we pretty much need to get ready uh, to rip this insert uh, out of here might have to cut it up into pieces we'll see the section of drywall right here and right here and right here have to go anyway and so I think I'm gonna start by removing those as I'm working I don't want stuff to be falling down in here so we can cover it up but honestly what I'm gonna do is just take this part out with the needle nose pliers and uh, I'm just gonna stuff something down in there to prevent anything from getting down into the drain I wanted to show you that the edge of the shower goes up underneath uh, the drywall and the drywall comes down on top of it just in case you didn't know so remember that when you're going to remove the shower that we don't want to accidentally rip off a whole bunch of drywall uh, by accident that we don't have to so just be mindful of that so I don't want to remove the drywall on the ceiling here so I'm just taking the razor blade and cutting and separating the two so that way when I take this off it won't try to grab any of that you can see why I plugged the drain you also want to probably wear a mask for this because there might be some dust and we don't really want in to inhale those particles into our lungs and we have a hammer that can do a lot of the demo for us obviously a sledgehammer pry bar stuff like that if you need um, and then Milwaukee makes this uh, this hacksaw which is pretty good uh, and so pretty much what I'm doing is I just made a cut right there real quick and then I can pretty much just pull this off it'll it'll pretty much just rip right off and so you can kind of see that it's really not a big deal it's pretty thin and also I wanted to point out that this opens up nicely into our attic space uh, it's the middle of the winter right now so I can definitely feel the warm air from this room escaping into that attic so I'll probably pull that insulation back up and close the door when I'm not working 
but you can also see the framing. Um, this is the framing that I'm going to remove. It should not be structural. I'll check on that. I believe this is just a temporary wall that they built to frame in the shower insert. Now this wall right here is the wall to our garage. So we ripped a decent amount out. You can see how I'm salvaging the ceiling quite well. And you can now better have a look at, this is pretty much the wall to the kitchen and the ceiling to the, to the kitchen. And you can also see right here, I was wondering why my shower head, uh, by the way, we should at some point uh, either find a valve or just shut off all the plumbing uh, if we want to do some work on this, because this is still live. The main thing uh, that's holding the water back here is this valve still. So I want to be careful with this live plumbing here. We don't want to uh, puncture it or anything. But I was always wondering why this was always loose. And you can clearly see why. They pretty much have this little board floating and supporting it, not really providing much help. So just a nice little mystery solved for us. And then you can also see uh, this vent running up into the roof. All right, the demo of the shower is pretty much done now. I just honestly cut around the drain because I didn't really want to damage the drain as I was ripping out the shower. I also was careful to not damage the drywall. I was actually able to rip it out um, after I cut a little bit here. Be careful not to hit any of the plumbing, but I was able to rip the shower out from behind the drywall, which was nice. So it's coming along with the demo. So the ceiling's coming down too because I really wanted to put a light in the shower um, and it would just be easier for me. Also, I knew that this was just regular drywall and I wanted to put some moisture resistant drywall up at the ceiling and you can kind of see how uh, where the moisture uh, escaped here in the corners and stuff. Uh, it looks like there's some dark spots of insulation so we'll have to do a little bit of mold removal. Uh, there's a couple uh, dark patches on the fiberglass insulation as well. So just peeling back everything, getting into the studs and the insulation and making sure everything is good and uh, starting to uh, tear this wall out. I already got one of the boards. Here's a look down into the bathroom from the attic. And so I'm standing up here. Uh, this is actually the ceiling to the kitchen. It's a tri-level house. And you can see how this wall that I'm trying to remove, you can see how the roof truss goes all the way to that exterior wall. And this wall looks like it's not really doing much. It was just put in temporarily. And you can also see how this big vent here comes up and ties in with the sink so you can see the pvc come and connect there and then you can uh, also see uh, over there the pvc going up through the roof and you can see how the attic here is structured with a bunch of blown in insulation everything looks to be in pretty good shape but i need to definitely restructure this shower area a little bit. You can see for ventilation, we have this fan installed here and that comes up and all of that air gets sucked out of the bathroom at a certain rate and gets sent through this ductwork in the attic. We have to remove this so that I can get this wire out, but I do not want to accidentally cut into this electrical wire so I'm just using a needle nose pliers to gently pry this out and it will break loose without damaging the wire and so you can kind of see how this happens boom minimal damage to the wire we got it out and we're good to go almost done with the last section of wall to be removed what I'd like to do is just take my utility knife and just cut the corner so that it is a nice break off when I do end up breaking it. So let's do that. Now that I have it cut here, it should come right off. 
<sighs> All right, let's set it down for a second. Yep, nice clean brake all the way up. Don't forget to unscrew all of the screws that you don't need anymore and pull out all of the nails that you don't need. Don't forget to save material when you can. There might just be a nail in it, but it's still good wood. So I got a nice set of two by sixes that I can use now in the future. Considering it's the middle of the winter and we're leaking a lot of hot air into the attic, I needed to grab some expanding foam, spray foam, and then also uh, I grabbed some two inch thick uh, foam board and it says that this stuff is good for walls and attics. I've used it before, it's pretty awesome stuff. Uh, it's easy to cut and, and fit in to where you need it and it also keeps moisture out. The easiest way I found to cut this stuff is to first use the utility knife, you know, measure out your distance and then uh, cut as deep as you can with the utility knife and then switch over to an actual knife, cut as deep as you can and then just snap the rest and it's not too much of a mess. You can also use the hacksaw and uh, that kind of makes a mess with dust everywhere. There's the first piece up. I'd like to get some in here too. I can feel this right in here. This just pretty much goes right into the attic. All sorts of um, cold air in here. A lot of hot air from this room escaping through there. So we're up here in the attic and as you can see we got the new foam board in and I'm putting some more insulation on top of it. And so this will be really nice and insulated now. So right in here is actually the attic to the garage and so we want to make sure that that's insulated pretty well because it's not a heated garage. And the demolition and preparation is pretty much done now. You'll see that the sink is gone, the toilet's gone, the cabinet's gone, uh, you'll see that the shower is completely gone, you'll see all of this extra space that we gained here which is awesome because we removed that wall um, you'll also see some nice foam insulation. Remember that the insulation that's behind it, you don't want to compact it. So insulation is really good when it um, is fluffy. And so what I did was pretty much remove uh, some of the layers of it and it's still fluffy behind there. But it's uh, much higher R value now and you can tell, I mean this room is really warm now and it's not really letting a lot of air escape into the cold attic anymore. So. I'm very happy with the first stage here. The next stage will be actually getting started with the new remodel.